If you're a card player, you'll want to pay close attention to this next story. You may think you can't be cheated, but once you've seen what Richard Turner does, you may never want to play cards again. Welcome aboard the Reuben E. Lee. I'm Richard Turner. I'm the resident cheater here. I demonstrate how you cheated at the card table. Now, say they're going to cheat you in Las Vegas at blackjack. They don't because they don't need to. If they were going to, this is how they do it. Note, three aces on the bottom. Ace of spades on top. These are not tricks. You'll understand what I do. The dealer deals the cards round the table. Only when the dealer desires, he deals the ace. Watch again face up. See, the card stays on top of the deck. As the dealer deals the second card down as easily and as if, he deals off the top. They're not off the bottom. The aces are still there. One what makes Richard Turner even more incredible is the fact that he's legally blind. Only when the His optometrist, Dr. Jerry Ledgerton, explains. Richard's vision is twice as low a vision as you need to be legally blind. His best corrected vision is 2400, which means that he can see at 20 feet what the normal corrected average person can see at 400 feet. By the same token, anything that we can see at 40 inches, he would have to see it about two inches. Richard has a hereditary problem of juvenile retinal degeneration. The retina, which we can photograph, normally the, the retina would be smooth, have normal blood supply. In Richard's case, the blood supply is not normal. The retina has degenerated. Uh, there have been pigment deposits in the central area of his retina. So that when Richard looks at something, he looks directly at it. He does not see it. There's a hole in his vision, much like if we were to take a mirror and scrape the silvering off. The prognosis is one of stable vision or slow deterioration, but no prognosis of improvement. Those who crowd around his table have but one question. How does he do it? If I do it all by touch, obviously I have eyeballs on my fingertips. I don't see the detail. Everything is just filled in blank. That's how I see. What you're seeing here is the result of almost constant practice, not just with his hands, but with his brain as well. I've trained my mind and my hands. I come up with something, I'll think of it, and I'll do it in slow motion. I'll practice that one move over and over and over. And then when I look down again, there it is, on top of the deck. Richard has a three-pack-a-day habit. That's how fast he wears out new decks, because he's always practicing. I can uh, be content in any environment, but I just pull out my cards and uh, start practicing. I practice an average of 10 to 14 hours a day. I practice subconsciously when I am able to do other things, so that way I can practice all the time I'm awake. Richard eating. constantly hones his dexterity. His fingers are so sensitive, he can identify a card just by its weight. What I do is not magic. Magicians, as a rule, don't have the ability to cheat in a card game. But I'm a mechanic, is the term, a card mechanic. A mechanic is somebody who can fix something. An auto mechanic fixes a car. A body mechanic is a professional killer. I'm a card mechanic. I can fix a card game. I can uh, control a game the way I want it to go. The only way they'll allow you to shuffle cards in big money games or in Vegas is like this face down on the table, because supposedly you can't stack them. If you could deal us out six hands, turn them face up as you deal around the table. Six hands, all cards face up. And if I deal, you'll accuse me of dealing from the middle. Note the fourth hand as it's dealt. There is a purpose. The purpose is this. When you develop that touch, you then have the ability to shuffle cards to any position or location, stacking the deck. It's another way of cheating. Academic. See, I never considered sight a problem. If anything, it is one of the reasons why my other senses are so acute, and I wouldn't trade the way I see things for what I've developed in case I would lose the other. <laughs> I like the way I see things. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome this ace of cards, Richard Turner. <laughs> just in case anyone is skeptical about what you've just seen, Richard's going to show us some more of his incredible skills. Richard, why don't you demonstrate some of the techniques used by a cheat? <laughs> All right. These cards were provided by your staff. You can note three of the aces are on the bottom. Now, say I wanted to cheat you at blackjack. Uh -huh. Note the ace of spades on top of the deck. I deal the card around the table. 
And only when I choose, I would stop and deal that ace. Oh, the ace. Watch it again. Turn it over. Face up. You see the card stays on top. Yes, I, I love it. See, I can Dealer oh, deals oh, the oh, second oh. card down. So he's <laughs> like deal one. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay. Okay. Watch again. Right. Here's a, a stud second. Ace on top. They say hit. Once again, it appears as though I'm dealing off the top. As you see, and I'm giving you every... The best angles possible to look. I can I spot it? Can I see it? That's great. I look it. Now, if I can't see it, how do you spot a cheat? Well, there are many tip-offs. Usually, they give themselves away by the way they hold the cards. Okay. A lot of your inferior cheats will frame the deck. They surround the deck like this. They'll uh, when they go to say a second deal, they go to take the second card. They'll come up to the top of the deck and they'll strike the second card as opposed to the top. Right. And then uh, other tip-offs is the second card will merge above the top at the upper left-hand corner. That's a tip-off. Yes. And they cover that with this action here. That's the biggest tip-off is the way they move their hands in all these weird uh, ways. Note the ace of spades on the bottom. The deck is cut. The deck is no longer cut. I'll do it in a split <laughs> second with one hand. No longer cut. <laughs> Slow motion. Okay. Slow motion so you can see. Cut the deck for us, John. Slow motion. Looks just as if I placed the cards on the top, but the aces are all on the bottom. It is negating the cut. I don't believe this. Now, give you an idea, the type of touch necessary in doing this work. John, give me number between 10 and 20. Watch close. 15. 15 cards. Count them. I miss by one sometimes. By thickness, I can pick one, off any two, number I for. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Right on the... Ah! Oh. We'll do it again. We're going to make it a little more difficult. 1 to 52, but between 10 and 40 is where it's most difficult. Save 26. Many people have the skill of breaking a deck in half. And don't say 52. That's too easy. 21. Try that. That feels like 21. Maybe 22. I get within one card. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and twenty-one. Huh? Is that good? Is that good or not? That's incredible. This isn't just incredible. This is enough to make a poker player want to take up Scrabble. <laughs>